Hey, Dad Brain, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over Geek Vision. Hey everyone, Dave here for Geek Vision at Kineticon. I am thrilled to be here with Rob Paulson and Maurice Lamarge. How are you both enjoying Kineticon so far? I we're, hate it. We, I hate all love, these. We love it. Oh, we yeah. love it. I mean, yes. No, we're we together. This we, is my friend, the brain. This is my friend, Pinky. Narf. Yeah, we're having a great time. I, you know, Fantastic. and this, now that I'm cuddling with Rob, I'm having an even better time. I love my brain. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really great. I love Dave. my Pinky. Yes. No, it's it's great. I mean, we fortunately get to do these often, and it's always more fun when we get to do them together. Yeah. Uh, but it is it, inevitably, and this is no different, wherever we go, the people are so sweet and so kind, and we hear the, the most lovely things about what we've done in uh, people's respective childhoods and all that. It, it's, it's great, Dave, really. Well, well my, my, my Twitter headline is, when you tell me I made your childhood better, you make my middle age better. So, and follow me on Twitter at Maurice LaMarche. Yeah. He's at Yakko Pinky. I'm at Yakko Pinky. There you go. Yeah. I'm at Doggins, but nobody cares about me. Oh, we do. <laughs> we do, Dave. We love you. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm sure it's fascinating because uh, voice acting, by and large, is a fairly anonymous form of acting. You know, a lot of people who enjoy your work don't know what you look like, but you come here and you are, I would say, rightfully revered as celebrities among uh, the, the con attendees. And... It, it's actually a great time to be a fan of voice actors uh, between things like your excellent podcast and uh, John DiMaggio's documentary. It's uh, over your careers. Do you think that do you think that uh, voice acting has become more and more respected over the years? Well, I certainly think it has because it's become interestingly while we're still fairly anonymous cartoons and and things in which voice actors participated become ubiquitous. I mean, they're everywhere now. And, there are all these different platforms, and uh, and a lot of celebrities become involved, and right. you know, more gets drawn to that. But but the thing is that folks like Mo and me have been doing this a long time, and we've had been able to work on some really high-profile stuff. And then with IMDb, Wikipedia, people do a little bit of work, and I venture to ha say it happens to Mo. I'm in a social situation. Sometimes even at the store, somebody will go, Robert Paulson. Wait a minute, are you that voice actor guy? Because people pay attention. Yeah, it's 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 become the worst kept, best kept secret in yeah. the in entertainment industry, and you know, and everybody kind of wants in now because it's a cool thing to see yourself, see your voice come out of a cartoon character's, uh, you know, uh, embouchure, as it were, and every, and especially celebrities want their kids to see them totally. be a, be a cartoon. So uh, you know, the word is out, and uh, you know, we're we're, we're, luck we're lucky we still work, you know, uh, enough, and. Uh, but you know, I'm not convinced that having big celebrity names in movies sells any more tickets, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it works on different levels. It, it, the, the Incredibles was. It was fantastic. And Craig Nelson and Holly Hunter and all the wonderful actors in the show were great. But it was a great story told in a beautiful manner and executed beautifully. Conversely, yeah. I've been in shows that are loaded with Oscar winners that go right in the tank after the first weekend because the story sucks. And, it's, and people are too sophisticated. Um, folks your age uh, cannot be condescended to. And I don't think the audiences ever have. If you look back through, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to wax too philosophical, but if you look back, all the shows that continue to be successful, Rocky and Bullwinkle, Looney Tunes, Fractured Fairy Tales, all that, it, it's, they don't condescend to the audience. They think that people will get it. Yeah, they yeah. almost write over the heads yeah. of kids you know, the little ones in a, in a, in a respectful way that's not going to be damaging to their little psyches. Yeah. But there are, there are jokes in there that are for adults. Uh, Tom Ruger was especially good at that with anima yes. in Animaniacs and Pinky in the Brain. And now uh, Tom has a new show called The 7D, which we both have worked on. Maurice is one of the... I'm actually one of the seven he's dwarves. He's one of the dwarves. It's a retelling of the seven dwarves in a sort of Jay Ward cartoon kind of style. And it's, Snow White hasn't been born yet. They're younger men. And uh, you know that that it's that's the the universe is a, a wackier one than the classic uh, 1930s movie. And it's great. because it's being produced by Tom Ruger, who produced Tiny Toons and Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain, you know it's you're talking about a killer pedigree. And then the cast with Maurice and Billy West and Steve Stanton and Kevin Michael Richardson and I, uh, Paul Scotty Rugg, Menville. Uh, Scotty Menville. And Dee Bradley Baker. Dee Bradley Baker, Billy Farmer. It just goes on and on and on. Really, really, really world-class talent. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, uh, like Mo said, it's the best, best, world, best, cast, worst kept secret, and um, uh, and the truth is that the level oh, of we want the celebrities out. out. We want you out. We, we want your families out, out of the business. That's right. Out of you the cartoon business. Boom. We Done. know where you live. That's right. That and yeah, which clearly we don't intimidate them. Um, but the uh, the the thing, the, the truth is though, the the level of, of production is so high. I mean, Ninja Turtles, I work on Ninja Turtles for a second time now, and the new show, uh, every nickel of that budget is on the screen. And if you watch TMNT, the new one, on a 62-inch flat screen HD, it's like a freaking movie, you know? So the level of, of, of entertainment that's available to people for free or for six bucks a month on Netflix or Hulu is crazy. And all it does is, like good old capitalism, it, it dri the competition drives people to create stuff because if they don't, they'll die. And it's, it's really, I love it. I love being a part of it. As a fan, I love watching it. It's, it's incredibly exciting. I love watching this one hair you've got in your nose. It's just going back and forth. He knows the remote yeah, phone. Ah, the fridge. <laughs> Now, you mentioned Ninja Turtles. You, you are now on your second turtle. I'm, if I live to be 100, I can knock all four of them out. Yeah. As a matter of fact, look, I'm Donatello. I'm purple. <laughs> yeah. Then, then eventually we get a one-man show where you're playing all four turtles all four on Broadway. Turtles. It'll be like the, three fa the four faces of Rob. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you have a sort of a penchant for finding characters that have stood the test of time. Animaniacs, now 21 years old. It's old enough to drink. It's, it's old enough to... <laughs> It's old enough to see Goodfellas Excellent. and finally understand what Goodfeathers was all How about. Cool. Right. See, that's precisely what we were talking it was about. A timed, it was a timed joke. We pr yeah, yep. and, and it did not condescend. Mr. Ruger and Mr. Spielberg figured, oh yeah, because of the cartoons that influenced us, meaning them, we're going to write this assuming the audience will get it. And the 18 and 20 year olds and 30 year olds and 40 year olds did, and now the folks who were seven, eight, nine years old who are now 28 and 29, 30 get it and they go, oh my God. This is great on a totally different level. And when we were recording that, we used to look at each other going, oh my God, this is so much fun to be part of. Uh, you know, because we love good fellows. We loved, you know, Marty Scorsese movies. And for them to be honored and parodied is just fantastic. Well, you're, you're probably the first person to impersonate Ray Liotta on a show that's ostensibly for children. <laughs> well, I, I said you're swell, that's all. You saying that I got a big head? Is that what you're saying? What am I, a bloated, puffy, round head here to amuse you? No, I didn't say that. I just, I said you're swell. That's it. Here's your swell. You know, the funny part is, I was trying to get his voice down. I found myself in a restaurant in Sherman Oaks called Mistral. My wife and I were sitting down to dinner, and I didn't even notice, but at the next table, because in those days you could smoke in restaurants, the gentleman leaned in and said, excuse me, would you guys be okay if we had a cigarette? We just finished our meal. And I looked and I went, holy crap, it's, it's, Ray, Ray, Liotta. it's Ray Liotta from, Good, from Goodfellas. I said, oh man, no, of course, smoke away. And listen, I, can I talk to you for a little bit? I'm trying to learn your voice for a cartoon. How cool is so that? So we pushed our tables together and it was his first date. With, uh, it's I a would, great story, yeah, I didn't it was know this. First, it was a first date. I think he ended up with that girl for a long time. Um, and and um, so we had a great little evening, and I learned all of his nuances. I actually did like a siler. I just sliced his head open. It's a little Heroes reference for <laughs> yeah. those who are looking forward for that show coming back, like I am, because I'm a Heroes geek. And uh, I like just kind of absorbed his voice, so it was sort of fun. Great, yeah. great, ep and I love the Good Feathers. Mm -hmm. Chick Venera, Johnny uh, uh, um, Mariano had some real Italians in there. That's right. Beautiful. John Mariano, the, the best, the best Robert De Niro, yeah, and then I stole it for the Don Bot. Yeah, in Futurama. On Futurama. Yeah, Don Bot. Now I understand you're uh, bringing Animaniacs on the road with the with the music a on, on a live show. Yeah, Randy Rogel. Oh, who... I'm gonna go to the bathroom now because right. this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> Maurice has got his own ego. It's got an area code. Um, no, the uh, yeah, we are uh, Randy Rogel who wrote United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, and many of the Animaniacs songs. And I got permission from uh, Warner Brothers and Amblin to uh, do a little music show. And we're starting, uh, our first one is with the uh, 
80-piece Colorado Symphony in Denver on the 26th of September. Imagine that. 80-piece yeah. orchestra. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to sound fantastic. It's going to be great. My goal is to someday get it at the Hollywood Bowl. I think it's doable. Oh, yeah. And I think it would be an amazing evening with all the actors because it is a show about Hollywood. And um, uh, so, yeah, man, that music was a, a huge part of the show. And if you go, if you've ever seen anything like Bugs on Broadway with the beautiful music of Carl Stalling and Milt Franklin done with a big band, it's... It's outrageously cool. While I, while I was away peeing, did you yeah. mention the date? 926, September 26, September 26th, at the Betcher Center. You bet your life. I'm going to try to come in up In Denver, there. Colorado. I might, I might fly up to Denver, Colorado. You're going to have the jet out on. of the shop by I will then? by then. Maurice yeah. has his own private jet. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. I do. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Well, uh, while we're on the subject, Maurice, congratulations on your latest Emmy nomination. Fifth. Very kind Fifth. <laughs> Two of which he's won. Yeah, it's, a it's my third one for Futurama, and uh, it couldn't happen to a better uh, robot. Uh, <laughs> it's the Calculon episode where Calculon comes back from the dead. Oh, tears, oh, lamentations. Would that mine eternal torment might cease. He's such an egomaniac. I think he would have come off, come off the page of my, of my, my, my Calculon photo to say, what? No Emmy? So... You know, I'm glad. I'm glad it, for his sake. I'm glad the show got nominated, and his performance got nominated. Yeah. Well, Futurama, despite what the Nielsen ratings may think, is definitely a show with a very large and passionate fan Huge. base. Huge. Yeah. Huge. And it's yep. come back from the dead more than once. Mm. I, you know, we don't know. Uh, right now, we're officially canceled, uh, and yet we're probably the most honored canceled show at the Emmys. We've got best best animated program uh, and and best. An outstanding character performance uh, nominations this year, and we've been off the air for a year. Uh, hopefully, maybe that'll send a message to somebody to go to say, you know, the show's good. Let's bring it back. And I know Matt Groening definitely wants to do more. So, uh, hopefully, somehow or another, he'll find it, find a way to make that happen. Maybe a, a, a you know, flip book or something like that. Yeah. But, and we just stand there, narrating the flip book. Sir, I've intercepted an Earth broadcast, but it will open the scary door. Submitted for your Emmy consideration. I am Lur, ruler of the planet Omicron Percy I-8. I trust the orgy pit has been scraped and buttered. Doom! Maurice, your love of the Orson Welles frozen pea outtakes is well documented. Yes. And uh, aside from... It changes his countenance just... Yes, always. I'm always past, past that. It. That's about where I say in July. Could you emphasize a bit in, in July? Why, that crazy. doesn't make any sense. Sorry, there's no known way of saying an English sentence in which you begin a sentence within and emphasize it. Get me a jury and show me how you can say in July and I'll go down on you. I have heard that 500 times. It never gets old. Never have I gone down on him. Yeah, never. No. <laughs> Day's not over yet. So. Now, you, uh, you, you got to recite that almost verbatim on Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. Yeah. Get me a jury and show me how you can say in July and I'll make cheese for you. You also got to play Orson Welles on The Critic, Futurama, The Simpsons. Now that, now that, uh, now that you've gotten a lot of use out of it, is there a second favorite impression that you're like, oh, I, I, I wish this would be used more? I don't understand the question you're asking. I created international talk like William Shatner. He did. And it took on a life of its own. In fact, I just got an offer that I had to turn down. But you know what? I probably can't talk about it. Okay. I'll just say this. There's a, the host of the show is someone that we all know and love. But on the show, you have to go drinking with the host. And I don't drink. I haven't had a drink in 25 years. So I had to say no to doing this show. And I can't name the host, but I can... So to let you know, it's somebody I would love to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's fantastic. Live long and perspire. <laughs> so, of course, Pinky and the Brain, still beloved to this day. Uh, testament to not only the excellent writing, but also your fantastic chemistry in the lead Thank roles. You very much. We, uh, as I said at the beginning of your interview, uh, being here is uh, is great. Being here with Maurice, uh, any of those, any of the times that we get to be together is... It was like at first sight. You know, uh, the yeah. first time we worked together, we just went... I, 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 I dig this guy. We both got the same references. You're right. We, we, we loved the British humor. Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. 
uh, you know, on the buses, uh, Doctor in the House, Python. And the first session we ever did together, I was like, he, he came out with something and I went, Oh, you know that tape? And we were just like immediately Totally, on, and you're right. It was chemistry side. at the be and, and we'd yeah. be, we are... As I scratched my armpit like a chimpanzee. <laughs> we are uh, uh, very close friends. Maurice is one of my dearest friends in the whole universe, and we've been so for 25 years. And so it is uh, uh, an incredible joy to always... Uh, share the stage or the microphone with Mo because really? and we still get to work together quite a bit you know during the year but to do these things where we just get to go and riff oh my god it's just a blast yeah excellent uh, thank you both for uh, thank sitting you, down Dave. thanks David cool you're not you're not you said your guy said you were a jerk you're not a jerk I like to spread rumors to create a false sense of trepidation right. and then <laughs> you're really not a jerk it's a pleasure yeah. to meet you thank you thank thanks, you very buddy. much thanks, David. And uh, keep checking GeekVision.tv for more coverage, as well as plenty of other more videos. Follow these guys both on Twitter, Yako Pinky, Maurice LaMarche. Uh, listen to Talking Tunes, and if you can make it, go to the Animaniacs live show. Yeah, we'll see you in Denver, the Mile High City. Good night, everybody.